Okay, so one of the real strong points on a Raspberry Pi 4 is its ability to run multiple operating systems on one storage device. Now I've done videos in the past on PinOS and Berry Boot, although I don't use them that much and the only reason for that is because I have no shortage of storage devices. I often get sent them but I've also bought loads of storage devices over time and so when I try a new OS I'll generally write it to an SD card or a USB stick or an SSD drive, something like that, and that works really well for me. But I had a question recently about running Android on a multi-boot system, and so I thought I'd better reinvestigate and see, because the last time I covered PinOS, it only supported up to Android 10, and that had only recently been added. So let's have a look at how to install PinOS the easiest way, and I'm gonna install it onto a USB stick, but it works exactly the same from an SD card. So start off by launching Raspberry Pi Imager, which is already installed in my version of KDE Plasma, but it also works with other versions of Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. So let's click on that. Choose OS, and I'm gonna go all the way down near the bottom, uh, miscellaneous utility images, and you can see PinOS is already in there. So let's click on that, and you can see I've already got it cached because I tried this just now. Pop a USB stick into your Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to plug it into USB 2 because I've already got something plugged into USB 3, this SSD drive. And if you run too many drives from USB 3, it takes too much power. So this is a more reliable way of doing it. It doesn't take very long because this is a tiny file to write. So now I can click to storage and my Samsung flash drive and hit write. And yes, pop your password in and you can see that it's a tiny file and it's verifying and it's as quick as that. So now what I need to do is shut this down. Unplug my SSD drive because there's two devices which can boot now and I want PinOS to boot which is on that USB stick and then we can switch off and switch on and PinOS will boot for the first time. So just starting up now and that's booted. I have this thick black border around the edge of the screen so let's get rid of that first of all. So we're going to click on main menu top right hand corner and more and then edit config and this is where you can make some changes to the boot. So let's type in disable underscore overscan equals one and hit OK. Now I'm going to press control alt delete which doesn't restart, but then if you do Alt F4 and then Control Alt Delete, it will restart it. So you need to make sure you've got an internet connection. I've got an ethernet cable, so I haven't had to do anything at all, but if you click on Wi-Fi, then you can configure the Wi-Fi in the normal way. You can see there's online help and information here and clear. If I click on the more button, we've got clone to be able to clone an OS. So if you wanted to make changes, but weren't sure if it was gonna break the OS, you could clone it make the changes and if it doesn't work just delete it and hit more and you can see we've got the menu that we had before. Obviously some of these things will show up when you've got more operating systems installed. So let's go back to that main screen and start installing things. So you can see from this list I've got general uh, where I've got Android open source, I've got Raspberry Pi OS, 64-bit Gen 2 Linux, uh, Kali Linux, all sorts of things on here, Lineage OS and going back through some of the older versions because you would find that some Android apps will only work with the older versions of Android, uh, not necessarily the newer ones. Twister OS, which is an excellent operating system but unfortunately doesn't get any more updates. Uh, we've got Ubuntu and we've got Ubuntu Mate and there's various different versions, 64-bit, 32-bit, depending on what you're wanting to do with it. We go into media, these are all the media players, so uh, video and audio players. Gaming, we've got loads of multi-game emulator systems in here. Testing, minimal, so very, very lightweight OSs. So say for instance, I want one of those like Diet Pi, I can click that and you can see it shows me how much space I've got and how much space it's gonna take up. Uh, Legacy, which is older versions of Raspberry Pi OS, this is, say you had something that worked with GPIO pins that wasn't supported in the latest OS, you could use an older, more stable version. Certainly that can happen with older camera accessories and things like that. Uh, and then utility and sailing. So let's go back to general. So we've already got DietPi. Let's go back up to the top and let's have 
Uh, in fact, let's not go to the top. Let's go for Lineage OS 20, but not the TV version. I prefer this version, which is the more tablet-based version, which I had in my recent offline streaming video. Uh, and one more, let's go for Kali Linux. So you can see it's showing how much is needed. I can go to install now, and you can see you get a warning about Android. Android is one of the only systems on the Raspberry Pi that needs to be told to boot from a USB device. So I may need to do some changes to the config.txt. I know exactly how to do it if it's on a USB stick or an SSD if it's installed separately. I'm not sure how to do it with PinOS, although I probably did have to do it before. Yeah, I probably did it before when I showed Android 10, but we'll cross that when we come to it. Uh, if you were doing this on an SD card, you wouldn't have any problems, but it's just USB boot and Android that has uh, that weird quirk. So I'm gonna say yes. And yes, this is gonna delete everything and install those operating systems. And you get these splash screens uh, that show up whilst it's downloading with lots of information about the particular system. But we'll come back when that's all done. So it looks like it could take up to an hour. Okay, so that's all finished. Didn't take anywhere near an hour, more like 20 minutes, I would think. So let's hit OK. And you can see what operating systems I've got. So yeah, let's boot with Kali at the moment. So. Let's just press boot and it will pick that as default, I would think, because it's at the top. And that seems to be booting nicely. And I didn't take a note of the password, so I'm going to try Kali and Kali and see what happens. Yeah, that must have been the right one. You can see that we've also got the overscan problem on this as well. So we go into the boot partition um, and it's going to be tricky to know which one's which, but if we just put the overscan one in this first one. Uh, right, so this is the Android one. Uh, you can see here boot device and we've got SD card and USB. So actually while I'm in Linux this is going to be quite handy. So let's delete that hash which means that it's going to boot USB hopefully. Uh, and let's just save that. Well that was fortunate. So let's try this other boot partition. And see, okay this is DietPy. So we can have a look in there, config.txt. And we've got disable overscan equals one uh, enabled. So it looks like DietPy is going to boot up all right without this border around it. So let's close that down. So it's probably this partition which won't let me edit it because it's the active partition. So let's try terminal. So control alt T and sudo nano boot config dot text. I think that's right, but I'll look it up if it's not. Ah, here we are. Uh, so disable o underscore overscan you can see here. So let's delete that. So this is for Kali Linux this time. So this is the running operating system and that's the reason we have to do it with terminal. We didn't need to on Android because it wasn't the running operating system so the partition is available. Uh, so control X, Y, enter. And let's try reboot, see what happens. So it says for recovery mode, press and hold shift. But I'm just gonna let it boot on its own and see what happens. Okay, so that's booting. And we're full screen, so let's do Kali and Kali. And I do like the way you have access to the different partitions. It's a good thing to maybe make a note of which each partition is, just in case you do need to access it from another system. But uh, the one thing I always like about Kali, uh, and I've got a separate video on this, so I'm not gonna go through the system, but where is it? All applications. Kali undercover mode. So let's click on this and you'll see that it goes from looking like a Linux system to looking like Windows 10. Even down to the folders and the programs, everything has a Windows 10 kind of style to it. Let's shut it down with a terminal. Control Alt T and sudo shutdown dash H now. So now I'm gonna move Lineage up the list and hit boot. Okay, so it didn't like it and went into a bit of a boot loop. So uh, for some reason, it's not letting me use Android on that. So first of all, I think I'm gonna try DietPy. 
So exit and let's put diet pie at the top of the list for now. Not sure what the X does in that bit, but let's hit boot and diet pie is booting up fine. So you can see the default login is root and diet pie for the password. And that's let me in and it does a bit of a startup and it asks you various different things you want to install. Uh, again, I've got separate video on diet pie. So if you want to see more about that, uh, have a look at that video. So I'm not going to go for the full setup of diet pie. Uh, I think I'm just going to control it, delete out of that. Okay, so Android or Lineage still isn't booting, so I'm going to boot back into Kali Linux. Uh, after rebooting, I've got a Windows uh, button now, which I didn't have before, so that looks better. Uh, so let's go into that one I thought was Android. Config.txt. Yeah, it's definitely the one that had it. Well, everything looks all right, and as I would normally do, it must be Android because it's this partition. So I'm going to put that hash back in. Because the last time I tried this with an older version of Android, I didn't need to change anything and it just booted into Lineage anyway. So let's just save that and reboot. Where is it here? Yeah, restart. And let's put Lineage at the top again and hit boot. And that's booting. So the bit I did before <laughs> made it not work when I thought it was going to be the fix. You don't have to do anything at all to get Android to boot from USB, it seems. Maybe it's if you're using a separate USB device. Because I've got PIN and also uh, all the operating systems on the same USB stick, that might be the reason it's working. Oh, but that's a relief. And that's booted up fine, so let's just hit start. And we're in, and it's all working, so let's hit the browser just to test that. Accept the Google license. Let's do a search for BBC. There we go, sport headlines. And you can see Android is also working fine. Great. So if you want to know more about PinOS and also Barry Boot, I've already done previous videos about it. This was more about showing the updates and, uh, and the, the fact that it works with the latest version of Android on USB. So uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.